Hey everyone, I've got this Sony PlayStation 3 fat console here. It's actually backwards compatible. It's got the four USB ports. Means it'll play PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. But the problem is that it's got the yellow light of death. I'm going to turn, turn it on to show you and then I'm going to see if we can't fix it. Change my input to HDMI. Not that it's going to matter, but I already took the hood off of it. And I'm just going to show you what, if yours is doing this, this is probably the cause of it. When you got the power switch on back here, everything plugged in, you got a red light. You hit the power button, goes green, then flashes. That's what everybody says is the yellow light of death. So, we're going to take this bad boy apart and see if we can't fix it. To start off, we're going to unplug everything. Sorry, I'm, my filming is not the greatest in the world. I've already got most of all this unhooked, but you'll have a, you'll have a power cable right there for your DVD it plugs into the side of it right there and then you have a ribbon cable up under it and I'm not going to go through all of the steps of taking the whole system apart there's plenty of videos out there for that <clears throat> okay once you get the DVD drive out maybe I could put us a little more light on the subject mm -hmm. I wish this thing zoomed out I'm going to use my handy little Dewalt drill you want to take this, this is your Wi-Fi antenna, you take it out, set all the screws somewhere where you won't lose them, in case you forget where they go. I try to put them in order or lay the part next to them where they come out of, like that. I've got all these with the, the hard drive and the cover screws and there's your wireless antenna and then you pretty much take every screw out of the thing but I start out by taking off the power supply here commonly known as a PSU power supply unit there's three screws in the front on this one three in the back and three in the front here three on the back There's all six screws for the power supply. Alright, I'm going to set you down for just a minute. Maybe if I set it over here, you might can see what I'm doing. Doubt it. Maybe if I set you back here, you can see what I'm doing. Unplug it front and back. Okay, once you get that off, you want to unplug this cable. Basically, going to take everything off. Unplug the cables because we want that motherboard out, is what we want. This has got a little cable here. Be careful not to break it. Should just pull right out. I laid my screws there with that. Okay, then you got four screws to hold this one in.
Ta-da. Now we're basically down to this metal shield with the motherboard sets inside this. I'm going to stop the video right here or pause it and then I'll come back when I get all these screws out. Okay, I got them eight screws out. You can see them right there. There's some little ones and some big ones. Then you're down to the metal and the plastic. And your motherboard should lift right up out of the plastic. And I can set you down again. Here maybe you can see what I'm doing. I don't know. Let me try it here. I'll take this whole thing. It should pop right out like so. They have an empty shell there. Set that out of the way. <clears throat> Right here, you got these little plastic tabs, try not to break them. See that? Just slide them off there if you can. It's not easy to do one handed. They're on the bottom. them off. Then set that piece out of your way. And flip it over where you have the fan facing up and you're going to have a battery connector right here. You want to unplug that and your fan and you also have two little screws on this model right here that have to come off I kept all my motherboard screws over there separate and by the way I have my oven preheating I'm going to do an oven flow on this unit <clears throat> let's see if we can't get the Thing back running again. Then you want to take these four screws out. Take these off, set them aside. All right, and then see these pieces of metal right here kind of bend you gotta gotta kind of get it from the front here and pop it up and then those little jokers will slide out there like so and there you have that piece you can set it out of your way <clears throat> and your motherboard should be free at this point but the tricky part is getting these connector so I just bend this little piece of aluminum over a little bit not much just enough to get it to pop out then you're gonna lift it up out of there hopefully sometimes they'll be stuck in here you kind of have to pry them out be careful prying on it you sure don't want to break that board or damage it the PCB board, motherboard. Come on. I think it should be in there. Should be loose. What's holding it in? Did I forget something? Nope. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna bend these on back a little. Hmm. Come on, Alan. 
Well, this thing must be really stuck. I've got all the screws out. Let me pause you all. Come back a minute. Okay. There was nothing else holding it. It was just stuck. Thermal paste stuck. That's what it looks like. This, be careful because this piece likes to try to come loose from the fan when you get it off. Somebody has put, looks like Play-Doh in here. It has thermal pads. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> What you want to do now is get all the thermal pads and everything that's flammable off of the board and wipe that grease off. You want to wipe that thermal paste off there and make sure there's nothing, nothing still attached to the board that will catch on fire because we're going to bake this thing at about 450 degrees for 10 minutes or so and hang on I'll be right back in a minute alright we're back in the house here we're fixing to prepare the motherboard for the oven I got it set at 450 degrees looks like it's already preheated ready to roll um, what I do is on these you have this piece that sticks out here on the bottom of this board where the power comes through right there. What I do is make a couple of little aluminum foil balls. What you want to do is get the board level. That's the thing. Aluminum foil is easy to work with. There's one on that corner. I don't know if I can use this pan or not. I may have got too small of a pan. Unless I set it up there like that. Nah, I don't want to risk it falling. Let me get a bigger pan. Hang on. Get it a level as you can. See how I have them placed there, and then I'm going to set the board here and here. Somewhat level, but I think I need to mash down on the aluminum a little more. Get it a little flatter. Now it looks good and level. Ta da! And from here, we're going to open our oven and throw this bad boy in the oven. I'm going to bake it at 450 degrees, 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. The oven's already heated, 450 preheated, and it's ready to roll. You don't want to put it in there and then let the oven preheat. You want to have the oven hot 450 degrees 10 minutes and I'll get back with you here in just a second or 10 minutes actually. Okay time's up 10 minutes. You can see the board in the oven. I've got the vent on in case it tried to smoke or anything like that. Turn the timer off. Turn the, turn the heat off this is where you got to be careful uh, don't want to shake the board or disturb the board so I just usually take and crack the oven door 
and let all that smoke come out. I don't know if you can see all that steam and smoke coming out. And don't touch the board, just let it set. You don't want to move the board at this point. You want to walk away, go do something, don't let anybody be jumping around your oven. Because if you shake those, if you shake that board and get that solder moving around, it sure will not work. It'll ruin it. But I'll get back with y'all when I put it all back together and I'll see you in a few. Alright, I got the board out of the oven now. It's cooled off. I let it cool off for about 30 minutes or so. Just let it cool till you can touch it and it's not hot. Now it's time to put it back together. What you want to do is, generally if this thermal paste is real old, you want to clean it all off with some alcohol and put new thermal paste. I would recommend Quicksilver is some of the best, but or Arctic Silver, sorry. There it is, Arctic Silver 5. Some of the best thermal compound for gaming units. Just put your thermal paste on and we're going to put this back together. I'll be back in a second. Alrighty, got it all back together as you can see. All except the cover. I haven't got the cover on it. I'm going to plug everything back in. Power cord. HDMI cable. Of course, the hard drive's not in it either, so. Alright, let's flip the power switch on back here. We have a red light. And let's see what we get. Green so far. And looks like we've got all systems go again. That's the old oven reflow PS3 to fix yellow light of death for you should work on any ps3 system systems may vary how to take them apart just google or youtube how to disassemble whatever model you have if you're not sure the model number will be back here on the back and i appreciate you all watching thank you for subscribing if you like these videos leave me a comment in the comments and I'll make some more videos if you like this one. And this, I was doing this to help any of my friends out there in the reseller world that may come across this problem. <clears throat> Not sure if it'll fix all yellow light of deaths, but it worked on this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.